Let's talk about two questions that I get in the office frequently. Question number one, how is Parkinson's disease diagnosed? Question number two, do you need a blood test or skin biopsy or uh, imaging study to make the diagnosis? We will answer all of these questions based on current evidence. My name is Dr. Sayas. I'm a neurologist, fellowship trained in movement disorder. Let's start with the first question. How is Parkinson's disease diagnosed? Parkinson's disease is a clinical diagnosis confirmed only after you die. In other words, during autopsy. Only the pathologist can give you the definitive diagnosis based on pathology. So basically, they look at a piece of your brain with a microscope and they find the pathology. Clinicians, physician clinicians like me, a neuro neurologist, only can tell you clinically established or clinically probable diagnosis. We are right approximately 90% of the time, especially after five years of symptoms onset. Movement disorder doctors use to make the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease this criteria that you see here by the Movement Disorder Society, published in 2015. The first motor symptom to have in order to think about Parkinson's disease is Parkinsonism. Remember, Parkinsonism is not the same thing that saying that you that you have Parkinson's disease. Parkinsonism is the big term, the umbrella, the umbrella term, which means that you have a slow movements, we call that bradykinesia, with either resting tremor or stiffness. The most common cause of Parkinsonism is Parkinson's disease, but there are many other causes. Let's talk briefly about this criteria by the Movement Disorder Society. In order to have the diagnosis of, of Parkinson's disease, either clinically established, as you see here, or clinically probable, you cannot have any of these absolute exclusion criteria that you have, that you see here, nine, nine of them. You cannot have any of these nine features. If you have any of these nine features, basically these rule out the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease like you see here, right? Now, again, if you have the clinical established Parkinson's disease, that means that you have at least two supportive criteria. One of these four, I'm sorry, two of these four. Two of these four in order to have this classification. And no red flags. Red flags, are features that make you think that you have something else, but not enough. You need at least, uh, 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 you cannot have more than two red flags, otherwise you might have something else. The clinical probable diagnosis require you to have at least one supportive criteria, but again, no more than two red flags in order to be on this category. So if the doctor tell you that you have clinical established Parkinson's disease, so the, the specificity is higher when you have this, this criteria um, com when you compare with clinical probable Parkinson's disease. The specificity is less with clinically probable Parkinson's disease. Now, these are the absolute exclusion criteria. So in other words, if you have one of these features, basically rule out Parkinson's disease, as I mentioned before. I will mention at least four of them that are very um, helpful in the clinic. And the first one here is number two. When you see a patient with selective, slow vertical eye movements. So you, you tell the patient to look up and down without moving the head, and you see some, some sl slowing of this movement. If you see that this is not Parkinson's disease, this is something else. Most likely is what we call PSP. Now, if you have a patient who is taking any medication that block dopamine, you cannot make the diagnosis 
the, of Parkinson's disease because the Parkinsonism that you are having is probably related with the medication. Because if you block dopamine, you will look like a patient with Parkinson's disease. Some patients, not every patient. That's why we, sometimes patients use this type of medication and nothing happened. But there are some patients that apparently they are susceptible for that. So in other words, there is no way that I can differentiate clinically between a patient with idiopathic, which means Parkinson's disease, and a patient who has a drug-induced Parkinsonism. There is no way that I can differentiate clinically, except with that DAS scan. So the DAS scan, if you have a normal DAS scan, which is here that you see presynaptic dopaminergic system, if you have a normal DAS scan, that actually basically rule out the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. Okay. Now, another one is if you give a patient high doses of levodopa and you don't see benefit, you don't, you don't see any response, and the patient at least have a moderate severity, you don't have Parkinson's disease, you most likely have something else. Remember, don't include tremors here because there are some patients that even high doses of levodopa they, you don't see any benefit from the tremor standpoint, okay? The resting tremor is very, very difficult to treat. And some patients don't even respond, not even to high doses, and those patients require more invasive treatment, such as deep brain stimulation. Now, these are the red flags, okay? We have 10 red flags. So, which means that if you see um, a two more than two of these red flags you need to start thinking about something else some of the at atypical parkinsonism before i forget let me tell you something every year you need to reevaluate the diagnosis of parkinson's disease because things change especially during the first five years things might change now let's talk about the second question do you need a blood test or a skin biopsy or any imaging study to make the diagnosis? The short answer, the short answer is no. There are actually no blood tests to make the diagnosis. There is no skin biopsy to make the diagnosis. And there is no imaging study to make the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. There are some studies, imaging study, or skin biopsy that help you to make the diagnosis, but they don't give you the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. For example, remember I, I mentioned before, a normal DAS scan basically rule out the clinical diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. Assuming that you are not taking any medication that might interfere with the visual in, 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 in inspection of the study. There are some medication that uh, make the test a false positive or false negative. So uh, you, you need to, the doctor need to make sure that you're not taking any of those medications because you need to taper down uh, those medication a few days uh, before the test. Otherwise you are wasting money. Also, we have a relatively new test that we call the SYN1 test, S-Y-N-1 test that many of the movement disorder providers are using to confirm or at least putting more weight in the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. It has a very good sensitivity and a specificity uh, over 90%, which is pretty good. However, this test is not, is not going to differentiate between Parkinson's disease, multiple system atrophy, uh, Dementia Lewy body, or what we call pure autonomic failure, or if you have REM sleep behavior disorder, which is acting out during sleep. All of these five processes, five diseases that I, I just mentioned, they have a positive skin biopsy. So they have uh, one of the abnormal proteins that is present in these diseases. This is the pathological pathological marker of these five diseases, including Parkinson's disease. But the, this test, this biopsy is not going to help you to differentiate between these diseases, okay? Now, this test is very easy to perform. Take me no more than 10 minutes to perform. 
And the majority of the medical insurance cover for this test. This is the report that you receive approximately three weeks after the skin biopsy. Sometimes take four weeks, but usually three weeks. I always tell patients four weeks, but could be even three weeks. Now, if you have symptoms suggesting Parkinson's disease, you should have an abnormal alpha C nuclein test, right? Like this patient have abnormal. Remember, the studies, including skin biopsy, need to correlate with the patient. Otherwise, this doesn't work, okay? Everything needs to correlate. You are not going to start doing biopsy in every patient, asymptomatic patient, because you are not going to get the, the correct diagnosis. Everything needs to correlate. Let me show you some picture actually from the, from the website, from the company website. So this is the area that we get the biopsy. One here in the neck, one the tight, and here uh, distal legs. Very easy to perform. Take me 10 minutes. Uh, I put some lidocaine before, and uh, and then you go home, like I say, 10 minutes after, and this is what you get, right? This is the piece of the skin that we get, and we send this to the lab, and we have to wait three weeks or four weeks to get the report that I show you. If you want more information, you want to read more about that, about this test, just go to the website of the company, uh, the information will be in the description of this video below. Uh, the company is uh, CND Life Science. And also I will post uh, a, a link of the video how doctors or provider perform these, uh, these tests. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.